Hey, it's Tipak. I am back in Katawa Shoujo. So, let's check out this northern sojourn. Returning to the living room, I decide to try out the television until they get back. With the touch of the remote, it immediately flickers to life, apparently set to a news channel. Almost flopping down from exhaustion rather than sitting, I lay back and watch. And watch. And watch. Where... Have they gone? Hisao? I quickly blink to wake up myself up, Lily and Hanako having returned minus their bags. From the Hokkaido night, stay, night sky visible outside the windows, it looks like I drifted off to sleep. Looking to the wall-mounted clock, it's already ten. Jeez, when did you arrive? You found the television, then. Yeah, it really does feel nice and homey here. I'm glad you like it. You were already out like a light when we came back after unpacking our things, so we didn't have the heart to wake you sooner. Judging from our giggle, I must, so I must sound funny when I sleep. I swiftly decide not to inquire. There's some dinner waiting for you in the kitchen. Hanako gives a deep yawn, only just remembering to cover her mouth at the last second. My, my, are you tired? Um, I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm pretty tired, too. It was a long walk up here, and it's getting late. If that's the case, I suppose we should retire for the night. Good night, Hassel. Wait, wait, wait a sec. Four-day weekend. We just spent all Saturday... Traveling? Am I going to spend all Monday traveling? Okay, so it's only really two days for us. Good night. Night. With that, they quietly turn and walk back to the bedroom. Rubbing my eyes, I sigh. I wonder if I'll be able to get back to sleep after being woken up. I suppose I'll eat something and watch some more TV quietly before going to bed. Or not. Okay, it's a loading screen. Kata wa show Joe. Is he still sleeping? I think so. I'm not. I am, however, incredibly tired. It's getting late in the morning. I know that. He likely stayed up to watch television. I could hear it from our bedroom. Only because I couldn't get to sleep. Should we wake him? Don't do that, Hanako. Please. No, we should leave him. I doubt he'd want to be woken early if he didn't get much sleep during the night. Thank you, Lily. Besides, he sounds so peaceful. It would be a shame to oh, wake him when he's like this. Keep a straight face, Sal. It's nice she cares so much, though. Um... Hanako, could you go to the fridge and fish out what's needed to make lunch? Alright, just the vegetables and rice? Mm, that should be enough. We only need something simple, as we can eat in town later. Hanako's footsteps on the carpeted floor can be heard moving away from the living room. As they do, I feel Lily's hand gently rest on my chest. Uh-oh. It takes a titanic effort not to react. But something about her makes me think she knows I'm awake. A long silence passes. The only thought in my mind is of that gentle, outstretched hand lying upon my chest. After an indiscernible amount of time, Lily withdraws her hand. Good morning, Hisao. Conceding defeat all too easily, I prop myself up and rub my eyes. How'd you know? Your breathing was off. Well, that makes sense. She couldn't have needed that long to work it out. Knowing her hearing, she likely knew before laying her hand on me. If you want to sleep more, you really should go to bed earlier. I heard the television going long into the night. Sorry about that. My medications have been interfering with my sleep for a while now. Even if I'm tired, I, actually, I have trouble actually sleeping. I'm sorry for bringing it up, Tysau. 
I sigh. This is exactly the kind of thing I wish others wouldn't do. Well, let's save. And I'm gonna address it. Honesty for the win, like... Who was it that said that? Kite? One of those... One of my few subscribers said that. Come on. You worry about me more than I do at times. It just means I have to sleep a bit longer, that's all. But still... I'd say I'd look absolutely fine, but I guess that wouldn't have a lot of meaning for you. That was rude. She gives a sigh of consternation before trailing off with an amused chuckle, giving up the point. If you say so, please do take care of yourself, Asal. Go on, Hanako could use some help. She moves to protest, but reluctantly acquiesces and disappears into the kitchen, her hand running along the smooth white walls as she slowly walks. For a while, I sit and watch television in an attempt to wake myself a little more, but it's futile. I don't have anything better to do, so I follow Lily's lead. That's a nice kitchen. It's got one of those fume hood things with a rooster and a spatula and a chicken. I think that's a chicken. It's got it looks like abstract chicken. As I round the corner, I see Hanako and Lily, backs turned, quietly cutting food on the granite-colored cou counter. I am temporarily engrossed as I watch Lily g guiding the knife down carefully with a finger on the cabbage she's cutting. Each slice d delivery delivered slowly but with precision. She seems a little slow, but considering that she can't see what she's doing, it's a small wonder she can cook at all, let alone for both her and Hanako. Hi, Hanako. Lily, want any help? Is that Hasa? Oh, morning, Hasa. She just cut her hand. Lily jerks back in surprise before turning around, her yelp immediately drawing Hanako and I to her side. What's, uh... A small trickle, trickle of scarlet falls downward from her pale fingertip. The knife having cut just deep enough to draw blood. With the television sound masking my footsteps, she must not have noticed me coming. To compensate for having to use touch to guide everything she does during cooking, she must need to pay extra attention. Lily! Don't worry, Hanako, it's just a small wound. You should still get a band-aid on it, at least until it stops bleeding. First aid stuff would be in the bathroom, right? I think so. Will you be okay here, Hanako? I frown at how little heed she's paying to herself as Hanako gives a quick, almost automatic nod. It, it's fine. I can keep making lunch. An awkward silence reigns as I set the bottle of antiseptic and box of band-aids on the side of the sink. Lily's finger held out for me to treat. The lid of the bottle comes off with a minimum of resistance and the small ball of cotton I soak in the liquid stains a pale green. Okay, hold still. This, this will probably hurt a bit. She gives a small nod as I take hold of her hand to steady it. With all the tenderness I can muster, I gently bring the dampened wad to the small red line. Ah! What? I've barely touched it. Sorry. I give a sigh, both at her reaction and to settle my own nerves. Her pain tolerance is startlingly, starting startlingly low. I would tell you to man up, but I can't really do that. She gives a small, as she gives a small giggle, I take advantage of her momentary distraction and gently press the cotton against her finger a few times. Thankfully, it's enough to do the job. We both settle somewhat as I bring the band-aid over the tip of her finger, covering the wound while making sure it's not stuck to her fingernail. There, finished. You can move now. Taking her hand from mine, she jump, gently clasps it in the other. Thank you. It's no problem. It's the least I can do after causing you to hurt yourself, after all. She lowers her head slightly at the apology, absentmindedly rubbing her hand in what seems to be embarrassment. I really don't mind. 
Her answer doesn't seem to make much sense, given what that what happened is pretty clearly my fault. I can't help grimacing at her, despite the fact that her dainty smile still holds. She must not like being reminded of the limitations her lack of sight imposes on her. Just like me. Or Hisao. It's something I can't possibly fault her for. I've fallen prey to the same kind of feelings before, despite my condition not being nearly as ubiquitous as in my life. Neither of us any the happier. We head back to the various smells of cooking food coming from the kitchen. I lay out the plates of food, steam slowly rising from the well-cooked rice and curry dishes, while Hanako lays out the cutlery. Knife one side, fork on the other. Western. Knife on one side, fork on the other. I don't do that. <laughs> uh, in the U.S., that's West. How perfectly fitting for someone like Lily. As we take our seats, taking careful heed of the dark red tablecloth hanging below our knees, Lily emerges from the kitchen. In her hands are three glasses and a bottle of wine. As I recall our previous run-in with the devil, that devilish elixir, I hide my face in my palm. Yeah, Hanako passed out on the ground. And then I was too drunk to leave. Alcohol? Seriously? She pauses and she reaches the table, the, a playful grin perched on her face. Akira specifically gave permission to take a bottle from her collection. Not only does she give alcohol to minors, she even lets them pilfer her own. The perfect model of a responsible adult Akira is not. More to the point though, that is that this is hardly a meal deserving of alcohol. I'm starting to think Lily's the type to become easily hooked on things. Uh, that's not really the problem. I don't really have any qualms with it, but didn't you have a bad experience it with it last time? Last time I was likely due to drinking too much, so a single glass shouldn't prove a problem. Think of it as a learning experience. I can't recall my... <coughs> I can't recall many learning experiences that made me feel rotten before putting me to sleep, but I'll take your word for it. She dips an uninjured finger to the side to feel the l inside to feel the liquid level, tip against the bottom as the liquid rises up. The white of her finger almost seems to glow as the sunlight hits it, the delicate outline blurred and refracted by the glass. Her, her fingers are definitely longer than mine, the kind I'd think more suited to a pianist than a teacher. She'd likely have done well if she'd learned how to play. We quickly dig into our meal, forks and knives clattering against plates. None of us are particularly eager to speak while eating, Lily altogether too reserved for such a thing. Annika probably too shy to start conversation and I too busy savoring the food. Such a pedestrian activity, eating together at a table. It seems so utterly normal, yet it makes me realize how long it's been since I've done something like this. Just the three of us sitting around a single table, eating as if we were a malformed family. Maybe this trip as far away from everything as we are was worth it. It takes quite a long time, but eventually we all finish our surprisingly filling meal. The wine, thankfully, has little effect given we've only had a glass or two each. I slump back into the seat, rubbing my stomach contentedly. I'm stuffed. Lily pats her, her mouth with a napkin, twice, only twice, and with evenly timed intervals in between. How do you have an evenly timed intervals when there's one interval because you do it twice? Isn't that it? Like, pat, pat. That's always going to be evenly timed if it's like pat, pat, or pat, pat. That doesn't make sense to me. It's hard to tell sometimes whether she, whether how she acts is a well-trained routine or a well-rehearsed act. I think I must be as well. Did you like it, Hanako? Mm, it was nice. Now that we're well fed, shall we be off? Off? Where? 
Ah, you weren't privy to the discussion between Hanako and I earlier. I get the impression that she's having a settled dig at my sleeping in. We'll be going into the town nearby. I guess I should have expected two girls to take a holiday as an excuse to go shopping no matter where on the planet they may be. I am interested to see more around the north though, so this can only be a good thing. Sounds good. How lo how's long's the walk in then? It's supposed to be around a mile to a mile and a half. That's not that bad. Nearby, huh? Great. Just great. Well, that's a nice walk though. As we climb the path surrounded by trees and undergrowth, I watch Lily and Hanukkah walking ahead. The slight breeze all but whisks away the sound of Lily's cane gently tapping on the ground. I notice that Lily's since removed the band-aid now, that the bleeding of her finger has stopped. A deep, lung-filling breath of the French country air makes me wish all the harder that the air around home had been quite so clean. It can't have even been half a mile, but I'm already working up a sweat. It isn't a pleasantly cool day, though, so I shouldn't be too hard on myself for that. Hey, Lily, how well do you know this town, anyway? Since I spe spent quite a few of my vacations here up until I entered Yamaku, I'd say I know it fairly well. We used to drive there once a weekend, then. How I wish Akira was here to drive us now. They quickly take a moment to rub my hands a couple of times, staving off the oddly cold feeling in them. That's not good. That is not good. Do you like it up here? I'd say it was nice during winter, but as you can work out, summer gets a little too hot for comfort. It's nice and quiet, at least. My family's real house is quite far south. When they left Japan, my parents gave it to Akira and I. Only Akira lives there now after moving after my moving into Yamaku. Well, quiet certainly describes this place. Though lonely is how I'd put it. Other than the prophesized small town, there isn't another soul for miles around. Coming from a home nestled deep within the big city, it's certainly different. I think that if I'd not come to Yamaku, staying out in the country like this would be too much of a change to get used to. After getting accustomed to the school's isolation, though, the idea of living in such a in a place such as this has become almost inviting to be somewhere away from the hustle and bustle of the metropolitan centers. So, Hasao, have you been to Hokkaido before? Nah, I used to live down south and we never had any field trips or holidays up this far. Well, it's a new experience for you then. Yeah, it is. I'm surprised at how nice it feels here. How about you, Hanako? She shakes her head from side to side. It's my first time, too. As we continue walking, I feel the pins in, and needles in my legs. It's a little disturbing, given there's no reason for it to be happening. Did you take your pills? I don't think you did. Hassau? Could you two hold on a moment? I just need to... Is anything wrong? No, I've just got pins and needles in my... Uh oh. My vocal cords suddenly become taut as my chest tightens instantaneously. I quickly pull my upper arm over it, trying to claw the shot of pain spreading throughout my entire body. Hisao? Lily's face is only mildly concerned, not knowing the sight which Hanako's recoiling from. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just tired. I re remove my arm from my chest and force myself to begin walking again. It's just a minor heart flutter, so it'll pass like the others. It only takes a couple of steps before my body violently revolts against me, my legs beginning to give way underneath me and all tension in my knees seeming to evaporate. Before I can react, they uselessly g give way under my weight, leaving me only just enough time to brace myself and fall onto all fours. Oh. Ah, uh, damn. It's- ah! As I look up to her, I realize my face is taut with pain, only adding that much to her worrying. Hisao, Hanako, tell me what's going on. Hanako, tell me. Hanako quickly moves to my side as Lily almost panics, having little clue to exactly how bad a condition I'm in. 
While she stands there petrified, I lower my face and take a deep breath. I come to a realization that makes me endlessly irritated with my su stupid self. With all the excitement of my new surroundings, I entirely neglected to take my medications last night or even this morning. Knew it. And you died. Taking another breath, the acute pain in my chest begins to die down as it ar had arrived. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. As it does, I become acutely aware of the sweat now pouring off my face and the two scared girls around me. Hey, Sal. I'm fine, Lily. I'm fine. I screw up my brow in an effort to lever myself up. Hanako's arm quickly moving to catch me if I fall as I stumble a bit before regaining my balance. I look to Lily and Hanako, worry written on both their faces. I feel awful, utterly awful. I think we should go back. I... Realizing the futility of protesting, I look away in frustration. Fine. Should have been working out with Emmy, so this wouldn't happen. Actually, I should have just taken my meds. Well, I have got to go. So, that mini heart attack there was not a good thing. Not a good thing. So, 